Thanks for joining us for the Fight for Your Marriage podcast with Charlene Steinkamp. This is a place where you can find hope for your marriage through Jesus Christ. Hi, this is Charlene. And Lori, and we are so excited to share with you today a powerful testimony that I know is going to encourage you. And I just want to open up with a scripture that have you think about the scripture as you hear this testimony. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8, it says, So never be ashamed to tell others about our Lord, and don't be ashamed of me either. Even though I'm in prison for him, with the strength God gives you, be ready to suffer with me for the sake of the good news. I know that when you're going through a struggle, that it can be so discouraging and it can feel so isolating and feel like you don't have the support of anybody around you. We just met somebody this week and she was going through what probably so many of you are, where she has a circle of friends who love her and care about her but they want to see her happy. And they think the way to make her happy is to try to set her up with another man. That is so true. There are so many of you that are are around church and around work that there are many people that might want to have you meet another man or woman that could be a friend to you. And we say, beware, beware, because it could try to turn into something that God does not have as a temptation for you. So we are so blessed with this podcast that we're going to share today is a woman is at her Bible study class and she shared her testimony of what she's doing and praying and standing for her husband to come home. And I thought of the holy boldness that she had and that she was prepared to share and got permission. And then she asked them, this class, to pray for her and her marriage and her husband. And that's what I want to challenge you. We want you to have a prayer partner, but we would love you to have a circle of friends at church that have that faith, hope, and trust to encourage you to hold on and not give up on your marriage. And uh, we're just really excited. And we hope this will encourage you to say, I can tell a few of my special friends to pray for me. One thing you're going to hear is how she's not challenging the people that she's speaking to to pray for her husband and for their specific situation as much as she's challenging them to think about the situation that she's in and to um, be a witness to what God has done in her life through this situation. And just like in Job, God gave his permission for Job to be tested. And through that testing, he came out greater on the other side. And through the testing that you're going through, you can come out greater on the other side as well. So I hope you enjoy this testimony. God truly knows how grateful I am to have this opportunity to share part of my testimony with you. As you all know, I've been here since just about day one, but I've left, come back, left, come back, and I actually left and come back a third time. Um, I grew up in church before I was even born. My mom, I would literally, when she was pregnant, I was in church. I didn't know anything any different. You go to church when the doors are open, you read your Bible, and life will be good. But I played church all the way into adulthood. Ten years of marriage, three children later, I finally realized after 37 years of playing church, that was not enough. I needed something more. I don't remember a time that I did not question my salvation. I grew up thinking that you could lose your salvation and you'd have to get saved over and over. You'd have to get baptized every time. That's just the way it was. Uh, February 7, 2007, same day as Wade, um, after being in this church since 1994, leaving and coming back twice, I finally decided I wanted to know for sure once and for all. I did not live as a Christian should, but I knew without a shadow of a doubt I was born again. In 2011, when my youngest, Caleb, graduated from high school, my husband and I had bought a farm years previous to that, but we decided when he graduated after the third child got out of school, we were going to pack our things and move to the farm. I decided then, when we moved, I no longer needed God. I put him and everything that pertained to him in a closet. I can't say I won't cry. Um, And I closed the door. I decided I didn't need him every day. Boy, was I wrong. (laughs) Because as we all know, you can't put God anywhere. 
He is everywhere and can't be put in a box. I believed all the lies that if you were saved, everything would be okay. But, as you all know, it was not okay. Uh, God knew what I needed long before I knew. The sovereignty of God is amazing. He had everything in order long before my life was turned upside down. In late 2017, I was in a deep, dark pit, a hole, whatever you want to call it. I had given up and was ready to die. God had other plans. At that time, I was seeing three therapists and on much medication. When I gave up on God and placed him in a closet years earlier, he had not given up on me. On one of my appointments, one of my therapists said, you know, it probably wouldn't hurt you if you tried church again. Because I had previously thought about it, talked about it, told her about this place, and she goes, you know, it won't hurt you. And I said, well, I was embarrassed and ashamed for the sin I was living in. And um, I said, you know, you're probably right, though, it, it might help. Uh, because I, I literally was at the brink of suicide. Um, I don't know how or the exact day, but I had erased every number in my phone that pertained to church. Everybody but two. That was Miss Alice's and the church. So I dialed her number and began to explain the state in which I was in. That was on a Tuesday. For some reason, we cannot find, as you know, they keep everything in a computer. My appointment was not in that computer. We can't find it. We can't find the date. I know it was late October. But um, her response was, Lori, you need to get in here and talk to preacher. When can you come? And it just so happened I had the next day off. Uh, she said, be here and I'll get you in. I came broken and unable to cope with or handle life at all. Uh, Pastor and I spoke for I don't know how long, but I did agree to come to church the next night on a Thursday night, meet with him again the following week. God was already working on me before I even got to church Thursday night. Um, I came to prayer meeting that Saturday church the following Sunday, and I haven't stopped since. God had taught me so many things in these last two years. I've learned what the sovereignty of God is. I had no idea what the word sovereignty was. I finally asked, called Alice and said, okay, you got to tell me, what is this word? What is sovereignty? I keep hearing it, but I don't understand. So I did a lot of reading, a lot of studying. I did learn who I am in Christ and that he loves us no matter what we have done or where we've been. Proverbs 3, 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not into thine own understanding. Philippians 4, 6 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. I had a hard time understanding God's love, because I viewed it from a human's perspective and experience. My view of love was tainted. It took a long time to clean the yuck and the filth off the lenses. I've learned to not measure love by any person, or put my expectations on anyone or anything, but the one who is love. First John four sixteen says, God is love, and he that dwelleth in God, and God in him. His love is an everlasting love, and it doesn't depend on how we act. There is nothing we can do that will cause him to love us any less. His love is perfect. And I've learned that I can do nothing without Christ. I cannot rely on any of my own thoughts or any of my own understanding. Everything, capitalized and bolded, has to be looked at from his perspective. I did not want to give up on a man that I'd been married to for over 25 years. I began to look in scriptures and read many, many books about what to do about my husband. Do I leave him alone? Do I pursue him? Do I divorce him? Do I do nothing? I finally decided after much diligent prayer, reading, that no one is going to pray for my husband like I can. So after being married for over 25 years, no one knows him better than me. Our marriage was up to me. If God can forgive me for the things I had done, I can forgive my husband and fight for my marriage. God has given me a love for my husband like I have never had before. So I know it's coming from him. I've discovered this battle is not with anyone or anything other than Satan himself trying to destroy me and the marriage covenant my husband and I made over 25 years previously. This was a battle that has already been won by God. I just needed to fully realize and put my trust in him and give it fully to him to work the plan he already had in place. The only thing I can do is pray. I'm to take this time to my life and live solely for God, and I'm asking God to turn me inside out and change me to be more like him every day. 
I've come to understand God's timing and my timing are two different things. So I'm asking all of you ladies to continue to pray for me that I can stand strong and be what God has called me to be, and that is a child of God, and look to him for everything and everything else will fall into place. I'm going to read a poem and a letter to you that describes exactly what I'm asking you guys to pray for. The poem is written by Joy McLean. She wrote a book uh, called Waiting for His Heart. And it says, if this is what it takes. Parched like a desert, my heart is hard and dry. Weary of the hours that bring sorrow, not life. Though my heart can't feel you, I know that you say, count it as joy for my love in you remains. If this is what must be to bring me closer to you, if this is how you make me more like you, then take me in your arms and hold me close to you. You are all I'm after. You are all I need. If there's any other way, I cannot see the end. All I am cries out to you. Oh, hold me close again. Hopelessness, it pierced through my doubting heart. Desperate for your promise. Oh, Lord, please come again. In a darkened garden, his heavy heart prayed. Tears falling down upon his face. Is there any other way? Is there any other one? Father, take me in your arms. Not my will, but yours be done. Now I sing. Change me. Mold me. Heal me, hold me. There is no other way, there is no other one. Father, take me in your arms, not my will, but yours be done. And then last, I discovered this gem, and I have copies for everyone if they want one. But it's called Marriage Affirmation. I am standing for the healing of my marriage. I will not give up, give in, give out, or give over. Till the healing takes place. I made a vow. I said the words. I gave the pledge. I gave a ring. I took a ring. I gave myself. I trusted God, said the words, meant the words, in sickness and in health, in sorrow and in joy, for better or for worse, for richer or for poor, in good times and in bad. So I'm standing now and will not sit down, let down, slow down, Calm down, fall down, or look down, or be down, till the breakdown is torn down. I refuse to put my eyes on outward circumstances, or listen to prophets of doom, or buy into what is trendy, worldly, popular, convenient, easy, quick, thrifty, or advantageous. Nor will I settle for a cheap imitation of God's real thing, nor will I seek to lower God's standard. Twist God's will, rewrite God's word, violate God's covenant, or accept what God hates. In a world of filth, I will stay pure, surrounded by lies. I will speak the truth where hopelessness abounds. I will hope in God where revenge is easier. I will bless instead of curse. And where the odds are stacked against me, I will trust in God's faithfulness. I am a stander, and I will not acquince. That means accept something reluctantly but without protest. I will not compromise, quarrel, or quit. I have made the choice, set my face, entered the race, believed the word, and trusted God for all the outcome. I will allow neither the reaction of my spouse, nor the urging of my friends, nor the advice of my loved ones, nor economic hardship, nor the prompting of the devil to make me let up, slow up, blow up, or give up till my marriage is healed. Author unknown. Wow. That's the end. Wow. I hope that encouraged you and just renewed your faith to not only stand for restoration, but to be bold and to tell the people around you, the people that um, are in your circle, your coworkers, your friends, and your family, what you're doing and drawing a line in the sand and praying for restoration of your family. I know that you can listen to that testimony several times and be encouraged of what she has learned in being bold and saying to other people, pray with me and believe with me for a miracle. The one thing that I noticed is that she was broken and you may feel like you are like an egg uh, that is um, broken and it's all splashed everywhere on the floor and not going to be able to be used. But God is going to use you every day while you're praying and standing for marriage restoration. 
And one thing she also said is that she was reading and studying. And it really hit me very boldly and very loudly because that was one thing that God took me down that road. You know, I made the mistake. I didn't seek the Lord. I didn't study the scriptures when I was going through the crisis of my, our marriage problems. Instead, I lashed out in anger and would not even let Bob repent and accept his repentance repentance and give him another chance. But God, but God grabbed me and brought me to church to listen to this couple two times in one day about marriage restoration. God is wanting to grab you now and take him by your hands to start reading and studying his word and learn the power of prayer. That makes me think of a testimony that we received recently from a woman who is in Maryland, and she was talking about how God had changed her. And uh, you've probably read it in the recent Saturday testimonies, but if not, let me read a portion of it to you. She said that God started dealing with me first, and it was excruciating to be in a process that, in my opinion, didn't matter. I couldn't bribe God or get around this process. And that was one of the toughest things for me to get a grip on, that I had no power to make God hurry up. I had learned to trust him and lean into him. He's my best friend and my everything. And that reminded me of what we just heard in that testimony where she shared that God had everything in order before she knew that her life was going to be turned upside down. He had already ordained the meeting with her pastor. He had already ordained what was going to be happening. And so just like um, this friend from Maryland shared, and we just heard in this other testimony, that we can trust God with the unknown. You know, I think when you read Bob's devotionals or when you read his books, the... um, how God always was trying to speak to him in so many different ways. And he was battling that he was a failure, and he was even battling uh, some suicide thoughts that that it was hopeless for him to come back to me because I was rejecting him over and over. And the point is that you do not know how your husband or wife are feeling 24 hours a day. God could be speaking to them, and they must choose to listen and then obey. Obedience is so important that we need to pray for daily that for we will obey the Lord as we read the word, but we need to pray for their obedience, that they will surrender their heart and life or flee from the other person, and that they will come home and be obedient to the Lord's will and way, because we know that God's best, and we know that God is speaking to them. The one thing that I noticed, and I pray you will notice, is that she started to feel and recognize God's love for herself, and how much he loved her and how much he really loves her whole family. And God loves you. I can't emphasize that enough because when we're going through this, we often are hurting with a broken heart, feel rejection, and our many family members are not speaking to us because of all the circumstances that are going around. But God loves you. Morning, noon, and night, Regardless of whether you read your Bible today or not, God loves you. And don't give up. Don't give up due to your circumstances. We need to sell out to the Lord and trust him. Trust the Lord, obey the Lord, and be obedient. I hope this testimony is encouraging you what you can share to your close friends and to people that you believe that can pray for you and for your husband and family members. I love that Lori shared, don't put your expectations on anyone but God. Amen. I think that's important to remember today. Well, I hope that encouraged you as well. Do you want to close us in prayer? Sure. Lord, thank you for this uh, testimony. We pray that it encourages this dear stander. And I pray that you would speak to them now and make it personal to them, that they can get the truth that you want them to understand and believe. Lord, you know every circumstance they're facing, and I pray that they will make time today, tonight, and that they would read the Bible and spend special time with the Lord and say, speak to me. 
Open my eyes and ears to hear your voice and your direction. Lord, I thank you that we all go through trials and tribulations. I thank you that you turn our trials and tribulations into testimonies in the future. I thank you that you are with us each and every day. You will never leave us or forsake us, and that you are our Heavenly Father. You sent your only Son to die on the cross for our sins, and we thank you for Jesus uh, being such an example that we need to follow and learn to be more like him every day. I thank you for the Holy Spirit that lives in our heart and guides us and directs us and speaks softly. Turn right, turn to the left. Lord, I thank you for who you are, and I thank you that you are with me every day, our ministry, and with every one of these special people. Lord, we are asking you to encourage this standard that to believe that nothing, nothing is too hard for you, that you can melt the mountain that they're facing and melt it like wax. We are just asking that you will bless them every day when they have a large circumstance, that they will just pray a quick prayer and you are going to help guide them and direct them and answer and show them the right pathway. You show them your perfect will and way. Lord, bless them to grow in the Lord, and we will continue to pray for them daily. And I just ask that they will just increase their faith, their hope, and trust in you. And may Lori's testimony be encouragement for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. One of the things you heard Lori share was the standards affirmation, which is on our website, but we also have it available as a PDF. So if you have not got a copy of the standards affirmation for yourself, we can send that to you today. You can text the word poem to 954-908-6744, and we will send that out to you. If we can help you in any way, we invite you to visit the website of Rejoice Marriage Ministries at www.rejoiceministries.org. Thanks for joining us today as we proclaim that God heals hurting marriages.